What's going on, everybody? My name is Alex Wilson from Fireside Giants and Empire Sports Media Production, and you're listening to the Fireside Giants podcast. If you are a diehard Giants fan, you've come to the right place. Daily episodes, interviews, draft content, and so much more. Make sure to drop a like and a subscription below on YouTube, and don't forget to leave a comment. We love to engage with everybody. Today's episodes, I want to take a look at James Bradbury specifically. Now, um, just a small trade kind of opportunity that I constructed that could work uh, with the Giants and the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, as we all know, Patrick Graham decided, hey, I'm going to leave the Giants in the dust. I'm going to go to the Las Vegas Raiders, who, I mean, by most accounts, have a better team despite the Giants beating them last year, which is quite embarrassing. But Derek Carr balled out, played well despite having a bad offensive line. Kudos to him. Um, but now, you know, they have an opportunity to take a step forward. Maybe they can actually compete for a postseason berth next season and actually make a nice little run. But they've got to upgrade their team. They've got to inject more talent. And I feel as though James Bradbury could be a perfect fit for the Las Vegas Raiders, especially given their salary space and the fact that Casey Hayward, um, their cornerback who they signed to a one-year deal last year, is now expired in his contract. So, they do have an opening at cornerback and James Bradbury, obviously a little bit more expensive, but he fits the bill perfectly for what the Giants need to do. Um, I think we can say by most accounts, the Giants are going to be using 2022 as a full rebuilding year. Daniel Jones still kind of uh, at a spot where we don't know what he is. We don't know what he's going to do. We don't know if he's going to be successful, but at the end of the day, um, I think the Giants need to be thinking long term, not next season. They got to think, you know, how can we succeed 2023, 24, 25 and beyond? Of course, we have nine draft selections this year, which gives us a lot of ammo and capital to work with. But I do believe for the most part, adding more capital and as Joe Shane would say, adding more swings of the bat is the most ideal thing to do, most proficient, most sufficient thing to do at this point in time. Um, James Bradbury, what is he worth, right? What is he worth at this point? Um, what can the Giants get for him? Now, personally, I think James Bradbury is a good cornerback. I think he's a CB1 on a team that plays a heavy zone scheme. Now, if you're looking at a team that plays a heavy man coverage scheme, he's going to struggle, right? Last season, he gave up eight touchdowns compared to three in 2020, over 700 yards allowed. He definitely had his fair share of struggles and, um, and issues playing that cover one kind of uh, man coverage system early on in the season. Quickly, Patrick Graham decided, you know what? That's not working for us. We're getting beat. We're getting burned downfield, and our offense cannot supplement any big plays we do give up and any big touchdowns we give up. Uh, we need to be bend, don't break, keep our offense off the field as long as possible because they're basically just going to give it right back um, and give us bad field position, right? It's actually kind of sad when you think about it that the defense played this bend, don't break, non-aggressive style because the offense was putting them in such bad field position that you know the defense was better off being on the field. And that's why Joe Judge said multiple times, we feel more confident about our defense being on the field than our offense given the freaking – uh, third down quarterback Neil just to punt it. I mean, talk about a low point for the Giants. That's the thing that got him fired. I mean, of course, many other things, but that was like the big eye opening uh, decision. But James Bradbury, I think, is actually super valuable, right? A lot of teams play heavy uh, zone coverage, cover three, cover two, a lot of uh, mixes and matches, and, uh, you know, Tampa two um, and disguising coverages these days. It's getting very, very unique and, and, and intricate the way defenses are deploying their coverage systems. Uh, but I do think James Bradbury is a good cornerback, right? He's only two years removed from a great from a great season with the Giants. Should have been a, a pro bowler. But personally, you know, when you're looking at the Giants cap space right now, they need the money. They need the $12 million. And they're going to be paying about $9 million of his contract next year and guarantees anyway. He's one year left on his deal, basically. Uh, so when you're looking at what he's worth now to another team, you're basically going to be paying, what, $11 million for a cornerback one. If you're a team that might be a cornerback away from being very good or uh, maybe making a push into the playoffs, um, maybe like a maybe like an Indianapolis Colts. I mean, they had a quarterback now. But Indianapolis Colts have a ton of cap space. Maybe you look at um, a team like the Bengals. Eli Apple can, can, can eat dirt, can kick rocks. Um, that guy, you know, probably better off replacing him. And I think James Bradbury would upgrade that spot tremendously. So maybe you look at... Bengals, who have a lot of cap space, maybe you go and try to trade for them. They're out there, they have the cash to spend with Joe Burrow under his rookie deal. So I think that might be a realistic thing. But the Raiders specific, I think, makes sense. Why? Patrick Graham is there now. Patrick Graham loves James Bradbury. That was one of the guys he wanted to bring to New York. Um, of course, Dave Gettleman knew him from uh, from uh, Carolina, but James Bradbury thrived under Patrick Graham. I wonder if he would still be intrigued by his services. And on Wednesday, so this week is an important week for James Bradbury and the Giants to make a decision on him. On Wednesday, the Giants owe James Bradbury a $2 million guaranteed roster bonus. So if they want to avoid that, they want to avoid that cap hit, they will trade him before then. I think the Giants will ultimately end up doing so on 
Tuesday. You know, wait as long as possible. See how many suitors you can get. Free agency doesn't open until March 16th anyway. So you have some time. Teams can't go out. And a lot of people have said on Twitter when I mentioned this, <clears throat> specifically, if the Giants were offered a third-round pick, and I think they could get a third-round pick or a fourth-round pick for James Bradbury, if the Giants were offered a third-round pick, they would have taken it already. I don't think that's true. Why? Because they the teams can't sign free agents right now. So <clears throat> when you're looking at that reality, that perspective, if they can't sign free agents, why would you just take the take uh, anything when, when it's being offered? Try and drive up the price. Try and negotiate. Try and put teams against each other. If you have a third round pick that's maybe 90th overall, maybe you wanna maybe you wanna go back and say, okay, I want to get in the 80s, the low 80s range. Teams are always looking to go up and down. Uh, the Raiders have the 84th overall pick. So currently the Raiders have about $26 million in available cap space. They lost one of their cornerbacks. Um, they could use a guy like James Bradbury, has familiarity with Patrick Graham, obviously played great under him and understands his system. It would be an easy transition. He knows the type of quality player he is. He's very humble. Um, and I just I like James Bradbury. I think he's a great player. I just don't think he fits our system anymore. <clears throat> In fact, Dory Jackson fits our man coverage style a lot more than James Bradbury at this point. So I think it makes sense. Um, you know, it's an interesting trade because you are, you know, trying to get rid of that contract. You're, the Giants are positive in the cap space. If you look over the cap, let's say we're negative, but they haven't incorporated this restructures for uh, Sterling Shepard or Blake Martinez yet. They have incorporated the uh, Riley Dixon 2.8 million so far, but the other restructures, they haven't really tallied on there yet. So we are positive a smidge. It's not much. Maybe we're positive 5 million, but cutting or trading James Bradbury, specifically trading him in this scenario would open up an additional 12. So you're looking at $17 million, which is your draft capital. It's your draft picks and maybe one or two, three low end, you know, just steals in the free agent. You're trying to find those gems, guys that can compete for starting snaps, but aren't going to be expensive, maybe coming off injuries. And by the way, what Joe Shane did with Blake Martinez and Sterling Shepard restructuring their contracts, retaining the player, but also saving most of the money, absolute masterclass. Like, that is how you do it. That is how you start a rebuild. You don't want to get rid of your best players. You don't want to get rid of the guys who are leaders on both sides of the football and management loves them. You want to keep those guys. And he did a great job figuring out how to keep them while maintaining um, a healthy salary cap situation, as, as at least as far as he could push it um, this season. But, you know, getting rid of James Bradbury makes a lot of sense right now. Do I want to get rid of him? No, but I don't think he fits our scheme. But the $12 million is very beneficial. The draft capital and more swings of the bat, like Joe Shane said, very, very beneficial. So I think my perspective deal in this scenario would be um, maybe a third round pick and you get the and you get the $12 million in cap space for James Bradbury. So uh, let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section. I'm interested to see if you think that the Raiders would be a good team for him to go to. Like I said, Casey Hayward's done there. They could resign him for another another year, a couple of years. But <clears throat> Patrick Graham's familiarity with him, the system change is going to be influential. It's going to be impactful. So we'll see. You know, I'm very I'm very uh, curious to see how they go with this. They got they still got Max Crosby over. They just signed him to a massive extension. They cut Corey Littleton, um, the the linebacker. So. Uh, you know, they're making moves. They're they're definitely shaking up the defense already with Patrick Graham there. So I wonder if they're talking to the Giants about James Bradbury and bringing him over to help smooth over that transition because they do got Derek Carr. They do have some good talent on that team. Darren Waller, obviously, Josh Jacobs, um, uh, Edwards, you know, Braylon Edwards. They have some really good talent on that, on that offense. Now the defense needs to be put together a little bit more. And they got the draft too. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below on YouTube. As always, my friends, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Thank you.